»« Encore un instant, » dit-elle, « je finis de faire le lit. » L'odeur du savon imprègne l'atmosphère. L'origine du travail est une commission, une invitation par le printemps de septembre à Toulouse et le jeu de paume to make a work in response to this chapel and the adjoining room, the uh, Salle des Pèlerins. The, the work has, in a sense, it's made up of four parts. The two rooms and the, the sound that we can hear in the background here and the images which are projected in the um, projection box in the other room. The origin of the work, apart from the, you know, the general condition of the, of the uh, commission, was um, suggested by two portraits that we can look at later in the Salle des Pèlerins. One of the uh, Duchesse d'Angoulême and the other one of a woman who's identified as simply fille de service, a kind of female orderly. And this struck me as something of a mystery, and no one has been able to elucidate the, uh, uh, the mystery so far, because the portraits are donor portraits. There was a practice of painting portraits to honor benefactors, and of course these benefactors, like the Duchesse d'Angoulême, were people of wealth and, and property. So how the portrait of a fille de service comes to be here, dating from the 18th century, I don't know, and no one so far has been able to tell me. One can speculate, of course. But that, um, that started me thinking about the actual activities that were carried out here when the building functioned as a hospital, a place of care, and of the work, the everyday work of uh, the, I suppose, mainly women who worked here, nuns and others. Centrer le drap et aligner son bord supérieur sur celui du matelas à la tête du lit. Border le drap sous chaque côté du matelas. There's a voice over, voix off, which is the better French expression because it's not over the image, it's off somewhere else and it's it's not a linear narrative but it's a kind of interior monologue a woman's voice obviously and in it we hear references to various aspects of caretaking of pilgrimage um, I mean that's the other reference here because you're in a chapel dedicated to uh, Saint Jacques de Compostelle and This is a stop on the route to Saint-Jacques tomb in uh, Compostela in Spain. C'est le pli triangulaire sous le matelas pour former un lit au carré. So the, the idea of you know, the pilgrim stopping off en route in various places, of course, hotels in that sense, and then the idea of the Hotel Dieu, which was a hospital. So um, references to, to caretaking to hospitals, to hotels, to travel. And we'll see in the um, images, we have images of the Salle des Pèlerins, but we also have, these are cut in with images of a modern hotel room. And the voiceover speaks of, uh, for example, bed making, it gives instructions on how to make a particular kind of bed, um, which of course will be a repetitive act and the track loops, so we keep coming back to this repetition. Um, so in this particular case, I mean, just to talk about the way I work, even though the images are moving, everything's shot on stills. And what I did in this case, I came here into the chapel, into the uh, Salle des Pèlerins next door, with uh, a still camera, a digital camera, and a panoramic tripod head and I made what they call equirectangular equir images, spherical panoramas, which means that when I stitch all of these images together, multiple images, 
on the screen of my computer at home, back in England, I, I'm in the center of a sphere and I can look around and drag around everything. So I, in a sense, I take a sphere of phenomenal appearances and I take it home with me. And then I can study it, think about it, live with it, and then I can start to extract from it. I can extract stills, I can extract camera movements, all of this, all through processing it in the computer. And I can also, using certain techniques, cr create the effect of, of camera movements in a three-dimensional space, even though all the material is, is still. So there's, there's something which is not, strictly speaking, still photography. It's not, certainly not cinema, and it's not filmmaking. So it's, it's uncinematic. I actually spent a week here yeah. photographing every day for a week. So, I, and the first thing I did actually before photographing is I measured and I drew. You know, it's, it's a process of getting to know the space, feeling familiar with the space, in a sense, entering into the space, and then trying to abstract from the material that I bring back something, this is the intuitive bit, uh, artists are allowed it from time to time. Um, trying to extract something that seems to represent my own feeling of being here, but in a rather schematically formal way also, because I, I decided, well, I'm really in a, a cube, so I'm going to show the floor, I'm going to show the, the ceiling, I'm going to show the four surfaces that are the walls, and then within that, I'm going to take certain aspects of the floor, the ceiling, the walls. And the, and, and the two portraits that I spoke about earlier, they, these, these come into it, these kind of slide into frame, but not fully visible. They don't need to, need to be fully visible because they're there on the walls in the Salle de Pellerin. So the, the work is also a work by the spectator of coming and going between what they see in the room, their actual perceptions, and then what they see of that room represented in my images and then they make relations between the two. Je ne sais pas combien de temps j'ai dérivé entre conscience et sommeil. So the ideal spectator for whom I work moves between these spaces, listens to the, the words, the voice. Privé de la séparation entre les jours qui nous accordent un répit de nous-mêmes et la promesse d'un nouveau départ. Je suis sur la pente d'une vallée, heureux d'être rentré à la maison. Je réalise alors que je l'ai abandonné dans des circonstances pénibles. L'angoisse et la honte me submergent. Un groupe de pèlerins me demande son chemin. For their assembly of their own work. Excusez-moi, dit-elle, je vous croyais parti. Regagnant ma chambre en fin de journée, je trouve le lit défait, exactement comme je l'avais laissé. Affaire de toilette, vêtements, livres, rien n'a été déplacé. J'ai l'impression de contempler la scène de ma propre disparition. Je me trouve dans une ville inconnue. 